Okay, well, welcome everybody um, to the Product Hive event for December. Normally, we don't uh, generally do a December uh, event, so Merry Christmas to you all. For those that do celebrate the, the Christmas season or Happy Holidays um, to everybody, uh, we're excited to have Katie here with us today. A um, couple things to, to mention. Um, we've got an event lined up uh, for this for January. We're going to have an interview with Brandon Gardner from Sembrar, um, talking about contract product management, uh, fractional product product management. Uh, so check that one out. It hasn't been announced on the meetup yet, but um, just keep an eye out for it. We've got a lineup. Chris and I are are working on a lineup for uh, next year for design events as well. So just keep an eye out for the postings on Meetup and on Slack. So um, one other thing I wanted to mention was that uh, during the presentation, if you have questions, which I'm sure you all will, feel free to, to post them in the comments. Um, uh, Katie can choose how she wants to address those comments as they come in, or if we we can do a Q&A towards the end. Um, you guys can ask questions directly or or just send them if in the, the comments and we can kind of field those, those comments and questions to Katie at the end. Uh, but yeah, welcome everybody and um, looking forward to Katie's presentation. So I'm going to pass it off to, to Katie and get us started. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Katie. Um, I am a senior product designer uh, currently working at Forge Studio, which is a product design agency. Uh, we focus a lot on product design and design systems. Um, and while I pull up the right Figma window, get started. <laughs> Um, okay, so y'all came here to learn about Token Studio and how to use it to level up your design system. So let's jump right in. So like, what is Token Studio? Um, simply put, it's just a Figma plugin that allows you to manage all of your design tokens. And what's a design token? Um, it's a, or I think a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on what a design token is, but I think we could probably all agree on that it's a design decision. It's kind of like it, at its core, it's, you know, I've made our buttons are going to be this color and then this is what that token is. Um, and it allows us to be able to see more easily, being able to switch from light and dark mode. Um, and simply put, this is um, an example of how tokens would be in use. Um, so you have like a global token set, a semantic token set, and a mode. So the idea is that we have these layers so we can have one place where we edit something and it updates. So say I wanna turn this brand into uh, a new value. Um, well, what, what you can do is duplicate this brand set and I update that token to now point to orange and we have a new brand color. Um, and we'll get into the weeds on how this works and we'll demo some stuff too. So if you're confused now, it, it, that's okay. Um, but this is kind of how it works. So, uh, you know, we have our, this primitive token feeding into a semantic token, feeding into a more semantic layer for our modes. Um, but staying at a high level, um, why I love using Token Studio is because they support a huge range of different types of tokens you can use. Um, and they still work with variables. So you can use them both hand in hand. So, you know, as we know, variables is new um, and it's getting up to speed with all of the tokens it can support. So um, if you're if you would like to still use variables in those features, then you can still use these together. Um, kind of get the best of both worlds. But um, my favorite thing is that they have uh, color modifiers and the ability to do math and apply more than one token to something or more than one value to a token. Um, so yeah, these these pros. 
um, which a few I mentioned, multi-reference tokens, which is the multiple values to one token. Um, a huge one is being able to directly sync with GitHub. So, you know, if, you know, if anything were to ever happen, you know, maybe Token Studio just decides to quit, you know, maybe, or what have you, then I have all of that information still stored in a GitHub repository. Um, color modifiers, and there's no limitations to the amount of themes or modes I can create. Um, you can do math calculations, JSON um, access. The customer, su customer support is amazing. Um, Sam's in, in this um, right now, and she's a lot of help. You can find her at Sam I Am Designs on Twitter. Um, and yeah, it's compatible with variables and styles. Um, some cons I hear a lot are that it's a non-native solution. Um, a lot of people like to keep everything within Figma, which is why variables is so popular. But I think it's the features it has to offer are well worth the fact that it's a non-native solution. Um, there's a bit of a learning curve to it, um, but thankfully the resources on how to use the plugin is growing. And then, um, you know, designers or consumers needing a plugin to be able to theme switch. Um, you know, having to open a plugin just to switch themes. I don't think it's that hard to do because um, it's just a drop down menu. Um, but also, if you're using it along with variables, um, then you're having to use Figma's UI to mode switch, anyways. So, um, really just depends. All right. So, let's take a uh, tour of the plugin. So, when you open it up, You'll probably get like some kind of onboarding screen, uh, but once you dive in and start setting things up, this is what it looks like. Um, you've got these three primary tabs up here, um, tokens, inspect, and settings. And the tokens tab is where all the magic happens. So if you know we look closely, we can see themes here. Um, this drop down here, which is just a pro. I won't lie, I don't have a lot of experience on the free version because I I just dove right in and got the pro. Um, but um, the theme manager is a pro uh, um, feature. So just be aware of that. So you manage your themes here and then you have your sets um, over here and then your tokens. So your tokens live within your sets and then your themes are made up of sets. So what that looks like is you have all of your base tokens living inside of your sets, which live inside um, your themes. And so they're referencing each other kind of like you saw in that um, first, ex first example. So inside the theme manager, um, just to explain kind of like how setting up a theme works is that you have the concept of theme groups. So and it's really just a fancy way to control these check boxes over here. Um, so if you want to start uh, splitting up um, sets into various things, like you can, like you can see here, I have four sets within this core. Um, you know, then I can have one kind of trigger to turn all those sets on. So you can see I've got four sets included here, and then um, brand. I got the brand set, but there's only one set included in that. So when I go to turn on the brand, um, only that one's revealed, and then I can click brand B, and then everything will swap to brand B, and then same concept for light and dark mode, you can swap between the two. Um, and then back to them all being connected with styles and variables, you can, um, there's a menu down here, uh, styles and variables where you can create them. I know if you've already set up styles within Figma, you can import them. Um, I'm, I haven't tested that with variables yet, um, but if you do know and you want to drop it in the comment about importing variables, please do. Um, but you can create variables and then sync them. Um, so if I already created them and I've made a change or something and I need it to sync across, um, I can sync them here. Um, so yeah, and then once you once you do create these, then that that's what creates the link between your token in Token Studio and your variable or style in Figma. It keeps those um, in sync with each other. Um, up here in the corner over here, with whatever set you have selected, you can see the JSON file. Um, so Token Studio is just kind of a, just a fancy uh, no-code JSON writer. So you can come see how um, those are written. I usually only dive into this when I need to reorder my tokens, 
uh, which has questioning results sometimes because <laughs> I'm not a developer myself. But so sometimes those brackets, I'm like, is that the right one? Is this the right group? But um, yeah, that's the only reason I'm really in here. Or if you like to edit values faster here, you, you can jump over here and quickly type in new values for whatever set you need. And then the, the settings tab, um, this is where you'll come. And if you are on a free version, I, you'll only be using a uh, local storage here. So you'll have this applied. Um, but if you're on the pro account, you can sync to a repository. So I sync to a GitHub repository. Um, and this is really great if I want to experiment. It's much harder on local storage to test things out because once you start editing and tinkering and changing values, I can't just like pull in the last thing I did. So when I sync to GitHub, I can say, I can test and then be like, oh no, we don't want that. Then I'll just pull back in my last sync and then everything's back to normal and I can rest easy after having a panic attack. Um, another thing I like to do is if I do really need to test things out and I'm just extra worried and don't want to sync to GitHub, I will just open things up in a new Figma file use apply storage or the, the local document option. After pulling in those tokens, I'll switch to local so I can just like mess up and tinker all I want um, with no fear that I'm gonna accidentally push. And then down here in this orange, you can see um, this is where you can push and pull to GitHub or your repository, whatever you need to. Um, and it's nice because it'll give you a little blue indicator on when you need to push something and then Vice versa, you'll also get one when you need to pull. Um, the inspect panel comes in handy when you need to view what tokens have been applied to a component. So if I come over here and I say, you know, I need to know like, um, oh, what's this foreground color on this description text? I can I can look at that. And right now I'm showing an example of deep inspect. So this is showing all the tokens applied um, not just one layer. So it's showing me the button tokens, the text. Um, but if I unclick that, it would only show me the tokens applied at the layer I've selected, the individual layer. Um, and what also I find really handy is this bulk remap, which is essentially like find and replace. So, you know, say I renamed a token and it broke a lot of things or, you know, something's going wrong and I need to rename a lot of tokens. Um, I can say I need a rename border radius. I'll just type that in, type in what I needed to say, and then boom, fix them all at once. Um, all right, so let's like get into the weeds a little bit. We'll do a bit of a demo. So just a reminder, we um, like where, where tokens are living. Um, so here we have our global tokens. These are all of our primitive tokens, our raw values. So like our spacing here is, you know, these are just, it's, I like to call it a catalog. Like if you're to just, you know, I'm, I'm a designer and I need a lot, I need to pull stuff for my, my brand. Um, this is what I'm pulling from. It's like, okay, we want purple to be our primary color and this is going to be our default. So this is your, all the values you can choose from, um, yeah, and then you'll have your semantic layers, which um, the semantic name here, typography, default, brand, these are all technically what I would call semantic layers. They're just kind of divided up into separate sets just for organizational reasons. Um, but later I'll talk about that you you could technically have all of these in one set if you wanted to, just you know, depending on your team um, and the opinions of yourself and your developer. Um, so your uh, brand tokens live in the, you know, brand, you're like, where you're going to set all your brand colors up or what's custom to your brand lives in these brand sets. And then your semantic um, color names for light and dark mode, which match, um, they should be exactly the same, which is different, um, pointing to different tokens. Um, they live here. Okay, so let's go in here. And before we dive into demoing the theme switching, I kind of want to give you all a better idea of what I'm talking about by just hovering over some stuff and looking at it. Um, so here you can see that same image with the global tokens. You can see these are referencing like raw values, just 20 pixels, 16 pixels. 
user referencing um, hex codes. Actually, I'm using uh, color modifiers to create my color ramps, but you don't have to do that. They, but you can see my 500 is referencing a hex code. Um, uh, and then if we move to the semantic layer, uh, which is we're abstracting that global layer, um, you can see I use t-shirt sizing. So here's an example of you know, my spacing for my buttons where I can reference two tokens in one. So I'm refer referencing spacing 12 and spacing 20. And sorry, I can't zoom in on this plugin. I'm sure it's looking pretty small. Um, so in those that spacing 12 and spacing 20 live in global. They live, they're pulling from here. So I'm just trying to show you all kind of like the order. Um, my typography set, I pull this out just again for organizational purposes. I have my typography set, they point to um, a lot of tokens within global. And then brand, you can see I'm referencing um, global tokens here, global font family tokens. And then here, when we ju jump into the mode, you can see that this primary interactive button, which would be like a background on the button, is referencing from the brand set here. So what happens is when you switch the brand here, those tokens are going to get updated here. So what that looks like in action is, so what we'll do is we'll copy this over. So if that's our default, and now we want to switch to dark mode, uh, we're going to switch the background color changes, our background changes to dark mode. You can see even here it's changed because in sets, the last, it'll always do the last set in the list is what gets triggered. Then I'm going to copy over and let's do brand B. Boom. So this did a typography update. And I thought it'd be fun to show how you could do assets. I don't personally use this in any of my like workflows currently because um, I haven't had the need to, but I think it's cool that you could set certain assets. So this is getting pulled from um, this media one token. Um, I have it pointing to just somewhere on my Webflow site or the URL from Webflow site. Um, and so they're different for, for each of these. So when I turn on brand B, it's overriding everything in brand A. I did, did this backwards. So we'll switch to light mode here. Just to see how y'all work. And then I'm going to create a brand C on the fly just so we can see how that might work. So if I were to create a brand C, which I have not tested, so let's pray this works. Um, I would duplicate, I'm going to duplicate one of these and I'm going to name it brand C. And I'm going to save. And then I'm going to come down here. Let's go ahead and turn it off. I've, I made some notes here, so I remember what to do. Um, so let's point these. What I do, what I would do is just, I want to change this to magenta. So I'm going to edit the token. I'm going to come down here and let's just type in magenta 500. And you know, this is referencing another token because it's using these curly brackets. Um, so whenever you want, you want to do that, I always use the curly bracket. Come from here. And then we'll do, I was like, impact, we'll be able to see it change well, even though it is ugly. Okay. Go to impact. And when you're doing names, font naming is important, like making sure you spell it exactly the way it is in Figma. And it used to be that way with font weights as well, but I think it's changed. Okay, so, and now um, what I need to do is like, I wanna create another brand set here. And again, you wouldn't have to on the free version, you'll just use the checkboxes. 
So I'm going to come in here. I want to create a new theme. Um, I'm going to, I want to add it to brand C. So I'm going to go brand, I'm going to call it brand C, and I only want that turned on. So I'm going to disable all these other ones. Say, you can see things are broken because things are all turned off so they don't know what to reference. So let's turn these back on. Like those. All right, let's see, let's pray. So if I flip this to, Brand C, oh, yes. Oh, I can see there's an impact doesn't have, and that's that's one of the things you need to make sure the font we match. So in here, you can see at least the change with the button, how it, how it changes over and then dark mode. Yep, the button background gets a little lighter. So that's how you would set up a new brand um, and how overrides um, can work for that. All right, let's go back here. And some tips. Okay, so your referencing order, and depending on how you talk about it, either of these direction arrow directions could be correct. Um, but you're always referencing as far as like a, if you have a token in mode, in say light light mode, it's always going to reference either semantic, or your brand layer, or your global layer layer, and then your semantic layer is always going to reference global. It's never the other way around. So like, um, for example, down here, like brand light primary, which lives in the brand set, should not reference background interactive primary in a mode. Um, and so that way the layering and overrides work well together, or so it's able to even do it. Um, and this arrow direction could talk about it kind of like in the first example is if you talk about global feeding into semantic, feeding into mode, then this these arrow directions could technically be correct. Um, naming conventions. I highly recommend that you collaborate with your developer because they'll probably have a lot of opinions on how you should name things. Um, but it's safe to say you're either going to be using camel case or kebab case or like a combination of those two depending and then always in lowercase. Now when it comes to semantic naming, you know, kind of here I've got this like heavy folder structure going on right here. Um, that's kind of a whole other can of worms I won't get into right now, but um, yeah, I highly recommend that you collaborate with your developer because they're gonna be a lot of help in this arena because uh, it's gonna need to match what lives in code. Um, and then to get this like kind of foldering example here, um, in, the, in the same way that Figment uses backslashes, which I think backslashes still work in Token Studio, um, but I use periods because um, that's how the, the uh, token names end up being uh, formatted anyways. It, it creates these kind of folders. So whatever your last name is, ends up being like the um, swatch name. Um, so using color modifiers. So this is really fun. Um, I experimented this with um, on my last design system build where you can um, use color modifiers to create your color ramps. And doing it this way allowed me to have some really great consistency and lightness between each um, hue. And so what this, let's jump back to the plugin so I can actually show you. Um, doo -doo -doo. All right, so if we were looking at, um, I set up kind of like that middle of the road 500 color as a raw hex code. And then if we look in to edit one of these, you can see I've added, okay, we're gonna reference that base color and then I'm gonna lighten it or darken it depending on which way I'm going um, by a certain value. And um, the values I have in the example aren't like, these are the best ones. It's You're gonna have to experiment with whatever works for you and the hues you're using. Um, but, and then you have some color space options. Um, I tend to just use LCH. I've found that that one's given me the best consistency um, across hues. So I've uh, been enjoying using that one. Um, so that's a lot of fun to do because then that way, if you um, are in the middle of defining all of your color primitives and you're tinkering, then I'm really just having to tinker with these 500 um, 
colors as needed and then the rest will update accordingly so I'm not having to like manually go through and edit each one um, and if I do I'm editing that value um, and one even one request I'd have to the tokens team is like being able to tokenize this value so I'm not having to go in and say oh all of our 300s are going to be 0.4 and editing each one You're like if I need to update that um, that would be great <laughs> Uh, and then you can also do gradients um, down here, which is really nice. So if you see here, I, you can do the um, degree, the angle, and all the colors, and you can add multiple stops. Um, that's been really useful. So token studios plus variables. Um, the build I'm currently working on is doing this. So I have been learning a lot recently on how to manage all of this. So I just have some tips to share with you and just some watch out and know hows. Um, so theme switching. So if you decide to link Token Studio with variables, your theme switching has to happen in the Figma UI. Um, now there are times when I use Token Studio's UI to do the same thing. And that's when I'm trying to update all my documentation tokens, um, which um, is great, I'll which I'll show. Um, so yeah, you'll need to use Figma's UI to theme switch, which is you can be found in the layers panel when you have um, a frame selected. And then some of the naming. So what Token Studio calls themes groups, um, Figma calls collections. So your theme groups here, we can see we have a core, a brand, and a theme, and those get turned into collections here. So um, you can see core, brand, and and theme. And what that means is also that if you have all of my sets within core, if I go to create variables, they're going to turn into, they're all going to be in one collection. And you can see here that I have global and a couple of semantic sets within my core. Um, I don't necessarily want those living in my global collection in Figma because they're it's kind of a it's a combo of both. You kind of you know want to separate those out. And some good solutions I found for um, handling this is you can combine everything into your brand layer. Um, one reason why I would just split these up to begin with is say I want to lock down what I want a brand to be able to customize. Um, then I might hide some tokens away in the semantic layer and not let them all be available in the brand set. So that's one reason of separating them like this. Um, but generally you can say, oh, brands can customize whatever they want and then dump them, just dump everything in here in this set and then export and then everything will be in your brand set semantically. Um, and then another solution you could do is just create a new group, um, maybe called semantic. Um, so you have those living there as well. Um, I think either of those, I'm currently doing, combine them all into brand A and it's working pretty well, um, but I would also, my OCD self would probably like to hide some stuff away and in, in here. So either solution I think is a good one. Oh, okay. So let's create some variables. Um, so we can, I didn't, I purposely didn't create any variables when I started this so we could kind of see how it works. Um, and then we'll see how they end up getting applied here. So this is a bit of a test. All right, so let's turn all of our stuff into variables. Uh, one thing to note is that you need at least um, one set turned on from each group uh, for them to create properly and make sure your file's not in a draft. Uh, I'm pretty sure that is something that will make it weird as well. So let's come back here and let's Create variables. We got a little toast saying three collections were created. And then let's come up here and the zoom bar is in the way of me. How do I move this zoom bar around? I am. We're just going to move the window down. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay, so here we can see we've got the three. Let's look at our core first. 
Um, and you can see because we have all of these sets turned on, we've got these semantic names too. So they're referencing um, other values within here. So these are technically the global ones because they're the raw values. And then these are the semantic ones. You can see how you, you probably wouldn't want both of these in the same set, um, but it, it did behave as expected and um, everything is living in here. At least everything that Figma supports right now. Um, brand, you can see all of our, despite me using color modifiers, everything translated appropriately. I'm getting um, things pointing correctly to the right thing. And then let's look at theme. You can see light and dark mode theme. And then let's see if we can apply these quickly to our design. So right now we've got some, just some hex codes being used. Let's say apply to selection. Ooh, yes, don't you just love it when shit works? Mm. So everything's connected. Um, it connected, linked to my variables. So now when I start making updates, things will stay in sync. Um, but I'll, I'll show how like you can't theme within here anymore. So if I switch this to brand B, nothing happens. Um, what I'll need to do is use this, the layers panel and go to brand B and then see our green button in our heading switched over. Um, and I assume the asset wouldn't switch over because that's also not supported. So, um, at the end of the day, my advice is there's a lot of ways to handle token structures. You can even start doing component specific tokens um, that I'm still learning about. Um, so at the end of the day, do what works for you in your team. Um, and that might even be like, don't even use token studio, just use variables. Um, you know, it's, there's no right or wrong way as long as it works for, for y'all. Um, and then, yeah, uh, we can do Q and A. This is me. This is my handle on most things. I'm most active on Twitter and I'm behind on writing some medium articles, but if you end up having questions after this, that we can't answer, I'm always happy to in the DMS. Um, so yeah. Um, let's look at the yeah, I, I assume there's some questions in the comments. I can't keep up with chat um while I'm talking. So if we just want to do like live questions. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, I know that there was one question in the chat um that I can that I can bring up, but I think Somebody, I think Sam might have already answered the question for for Brian. Yeah, Katie, oh, okay. if, if I could still ask um, a version of that question um, for your. So I, I work on a cross platform um, application that has an iOS, um, Android, and web kind of instance. Um, and so one of the challenges that I'm dealing with, having recently come on this team, is trying to sync our styles across three different platforms. I'm just curious if you mm -hmm. have any advice for someone like kind of trying to do that, both in the way I'm collaborating with developers and kind of starting those conversations and using Token Studio specifically for that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good question. Because honestly, I haven't really had to do it after the fact. I'm usually building platform agnostic uh, systems from scratch. So I'm kind of just making, I don't really set, actually don't really set different like breakpoint token. So honestly, Sam was probably a better person to ask that question. <laughs> okay. Um, I know Parker had a question for you. Yeah. Hey, Katie. <clears throat> um, I was just wondering if you could go into a little bit about like how you create design systems, like in your day to day, like, like when does this become applicable for what you do, because I, I see you work for Forge Studio, uh, which I assume is an agency and you have different clients, which is like totally different than than what I do in house where I manage only like one design system or work on one design system. So if you could like, I, I don't know if you could like show us an example of of something you're working on and how it how it all ties together. 
Um, yeah, I probably can't because of it, some some NDAs, but um, my day to day is honestly like spending a lot of time in this plugin. Um, I'm typically creating um, design systems from scratch, usually to get an MVP. I might be brought in, um, you know, a larger company who might need to sync components they already have built and um, they don't have a design system, but they've been just kind of been using a UI kit, but they have some stuff in code, but not really. And we kind of fix all that. Um, or I'm truly starting from from scratch and collaborating with developers on, on in-house teams. Um, but uh, a lot of what that looks like is kind of going through and um, we spend a lot of time setting up the foundations and collaborating about what the token structure should look like. Um, and then because from here, if you get all your token structures right and, you know, how you want to name things, um, when it comes time to, like, build your components, um, it, it becomes a breeze because you've kind of already assigned um, how your semantic colors are going to be, what your defaults are going to be. And, and through this process, I'm not necessarily blindly doing that. Um, I'll do a lot of, like, exploratory examples or, like, you know... Um, this is what a table would look like in this color way. Do we want to make these design decisions, turn them into tokens, um, and move forward with that direction? Um, and then from there, it's just building uh, building the components. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, right on. I think, I think there are some scenarios where certain companies, so for instance, like at Seismic, we had three acquisitions within our company and at, and at a certain point you kind of have to, or for a while, you have to maintain multiple des design systems and brands and styles across multiple teams. And if you could build a, a way for you to swap that as easily through a, something like Token Studio, going from one to the other, um, it might make a lot of sense. Oh yeah. So if I, cause I am having, if I need to go do something on another design system, I built, um, I just switch, uh, we'll see. I don't know. Oh, good. It, uh, um, typically I cleared my cache, so they're all gone now, but I'll have like a list of all of the repositories I'm managing and the settings. Cause you'll just add a new one. Um, if I need to go, well, it kind of does it automatically. If I go open up another design systems file, that repository is already going to be active. Um, but if I do need to open up like a fresh file, I can always pull from those repositories as needed. And it's 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 really easy to manage a lot of different dis systems um, that way. And, the, and we eventually do have what we offer our clients support throughout um, and even after handoff. Um, but there is eventually a handoff and they have, they'll start developing a design, like an internal team um, or we just continue support um, afterwards through like a retainer, if you will. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Anyone else uh, have any questions they want to ask Katie? Feel free to just un unmute and, and ask or just shoot a message in chat and I can ask it. Yeah, or if anything it was confusing or y'all want, want to see me do anything else in the plugin or explain it, because it's kind of a lot. It's con I was confused when I was first learning this. <laughs> well, this has been really great um, as far as uh, seeing the detail that you go through with global and applying them to brands and the naming conventions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, thanks for so, it. All, it all worked so well. The demo, the live demo is like, just, uh, it was like, it worked. I know, right? I love it when it just works. I feel like I always have uh feel myself saying that when I'm using the plugin. But I, I will admit sometimes things I'm like, Oop, it's not working. We got to figure it out. But most of the time I'm like, ah, oh, look at everything connect, especially when it's like connecting with Figma. I'm just like, this is nice. Brings brings back a lot of memories, uh, developer memories days. I used to be a hybrid designer developer. And it's like when it works, you're just like, yes, it worked. Like all of it's connected. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't seem like there's uh, many 
many more questions. If you have other questions or if you want to, if you start digging deep into using Token Studio and um, have questions, I'm sure Katie would be happy to, to answer and, and help. And I'm, I'm sure she can get you connected with Sam as well and, and the team there. Um, thank you so much, Katie, for, for demoing this and walking uh, walking us through this it it's um i think for some people it might be really, really advanced things and working systems in if they're not if they don't have a good solid advanced design system right now and um i think it, it really is helpful for the community so thank you so much yeah thanks for having me yeah um well, uh, again, look out for the event coming up in in January. And um, Chris and I, uh, Chris Cannon, thank you so much for for connecting us with Katie and, and helping set up set up this event. Um, we've got some events planned coming up at, next year, and hope you all have a great Thursday afternoon. See you, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs>